what is that I hear? Wedding bells? That's right, I'm getting married. Uh, also, I want to point out that my friend made this sick shirt. Since I love Beyonce, it says fiance. And I'm going to be wearing this for the whole time that I am a fiance. Because he's hopefully, fingers crossed, that's only once. Hey guys, welcome back to Keeping Up With Kaylee. Where I like to share things that is going on in my life with my friends and family. And also, this is going to be a great way for my friends and family to keep up with with what I'm doing with my wedding and for my new followers, if you're interested or are getting married, hopefully this will be helpful to you because I had no idea it is a lot more than just a Pinterest board. There's a lot of planning, there's a lot of details, there's a lot of hidden things that you need to be aware of. So let's get into this wedding vlog. This video is particularly for people who do have a budget, like myself, so you're gonna be able to relate more to what I'm talking about. If you don't have a budget, please continue to watch if you want, but if not, um, maybe go to a different video. All right, so if you're watching this, hopefully you are engaged, and congratulations if you are. It is a very exciting time. If you haven't seen our engagement video, please click the engagement video above or watch it afterwards because it was so magical, and Ryan did a really, really good job. The poor guy keeps saying, why don't I get anything? I did such a nice engagement. Usually the girl gets all the gifts and the congratulations, but I want to congratulate him on pulling off an awesome engagement. It was above and beyond. All right, so Ryan and I decided to soak things in the first couple of months and really enjoy being engaged to one another. Even though I secretly was, you know, hardcore pinning things on Pinterest and I kind of was scrolling through like a bunch of different venues and vendors already on my Instagram, but I didn't really talk about it with him until maybe like March, no, end of March, beginning of April. And that's when we decided this is what you guys need to discuss. First thing you have to do is discuss where you want to get married, which is very important. All of our families on the East Coast, so that's where we'll be getting married. Um, you want to discuss what time of year you want to get married because that is very important, especially due to location because some places summer is super hot and some places summer is not, so you might want to do the fall. Another thing you want to discuss is obviously your budget. Budget is extremely important and how many people you decide to invite to your wedding is going to be a huge, huge part of your budget and that's what I started learning. Um, I had a, I didn't think I was going to invite a lot of people to my wedding and then you start writing down names and it becomes very, very long and you're like, crap. All these like little people that you would want to invite, sorry, they're not little, they're important to your life, obviously you're writing them down, but all these people that you would think, oh, it would be nice to have them there, it also is extremely expensive to just have them there just because. Um, so you really have to weigh the importance of that. Not that they're not important, it's just you really have to think about what you're able to spend and not spend, and if they are good friends and family, they will understand that. There's plenty of other ways to celebrate a wedding, so don't fret. Next thing is, I didn't want to have a wedding planner in the first place just because I absolutely love to plan things, especially when it comes to parties. So I knew I didn't want a wedding planner, but I know it's a lot of work and some people aren't like that, so I would suggest if things overwhelm you very easily, please, please include in the budget a wedding planner. After you kind of talked all that through with your fiance is starting to look at venues and you want to discuss the style of your venue. Maybe your fiance doesn't care what it looks like. Um, I know I've heard a lot of people say that their fiances like to be involved and others just could completely care less. I've only been told two things since the wedding planning process from Ryan and it's the flavor cake he would like and what, how he would like it to look and then he had a say on what he liked about a venue and what he didn't like about the venues. So Ryan and I were really really set on having a barn style wedding and we got really lucky because we kind of got the best of both worlds. At first we looked at like three different locations every location I was like oh yeah I'm getting married here and then you find out about the hidden costs which I'll talk about so then I went to another venue and I'm like oh for sure we're getting married here then you find about other things that you're not so sure about 
third place I got really lucky and I was like this is perfect it's a perfect balance between being very sophisticated and very princess Meghan Merkel Duchess Mer Meghan Merkel sorry and then I also get kind of the farm setting vibes I grew up on a farm so I just thought that, that would be really special for me so they have a stables which is almost like a, a barn chateau and it's currently being completed and I'm so excited to see what it looks like um so I had the best of those worlds and you're gonna I wasn't able to visit my venues because I live on the West Coast, but definitely go and check out your venues because it's gonna be a major factor as to what you're gonna choose and what you're not gonna choose. My parents went out and looked at the venues, also my aunts, shout out to my aunts. Um, they went to the venues, checked it out, and saw what it would look like, FaceTimed me so I got a good feel, and that's just with my circumstance, that's what I had to do. And it worked out fine. Okay, so for as the hidden costs, you guys, they they really try to trick you. If you say wedding, they're gonna charge you a lot more than you realize. Once you say wedding, they're gonna charge you up the wazoo, so be prepared for that. But when you reach out to a venue, they're going to send you a brochure or maybe a contract of some sorts and it will break down everything for you. Sometimes in people's photos, it's gonna show a beautiful ballroom with really nice um, chairs and draping, all this, all this great stuff, right? And you're like, ooh, yes, love it, want it. Let me ask how much it's gonna cost. So on the website, it's gonna say, let's say 6,500. Then you get the contract and it's 6,500 plus $40 for the, act the nicer chairs. They'll give you the, the crappy chairs for free, but if you want the nice ones, they're gonna upcharge you. Sometimes they upcharge you for the drapery. Um, sometimes there's venues that have all-inclusive and what you see is what you get and that's amazing. What I stumbled upon a lot is that there was a lot of extra charges on top of what they quoted on that website, which was a huge bummer. So do not get your hopes up. If you see something and it's in your budget and you're super excited because once you get that brochure, it may be different. Okay, so once you've locked your venue, which is super exciting, um, you guys have to start thinking about obviously the guest list. Write out your whole guest list. I thought I wanted um, a larger wedding and now that I picked a little bit more of an expensive venue, I'm going to start unfortunately cutting down my guest list that has been really hard to do so we'll see how that works out hopefully this is helpful to you um, I just want people to have as less stress as possible because unfortunately in weddings there's a lot of extra little things that you don't realize and it comes from the left and it comes from the right and you're like what in the heck I thought this was gonna be fun and easy and it can be you just have to be aware and you have to just let things go and know, just know, it will all turn out the way you want it to be and even more so because it's your day and your, your fiance are there to get married and yes, have a beautiful event, but the whole point of being at this one day with all your friends and family is to seal the deal. And everything else is bonus. So look at it that way. Start thinking about your bridal party, how many you want to have in your bridal party and your groomsmen. Um, and personally, what I have found is do what you want. Don't, I mean, as long as it's in your budget, if you want to have 25 girls, have 25 girls. Um, if you want to have only one, that's completely fine. Uh, don't do the honorary bridesmaid that's just effed up. So I haven't asked all my bridesmaids yet, so I'm not going to tell you how many I have. I'll do that in my next vlog. But yes, it's very exciting. That's also another thing that you have to start planning, so we'll talk about that in the next vlog. Um, I want to talk about the Lauren Conrad Celebrate book because I've been enjoying this a lot. There's a wedding planning timeline in here, which is helpful. I do have to say, though, it doesn't say to start looking at your vendors until 10 months, and I'm really glad I didn't listen to that because I had two people in mind that I wanted to do things with, and... For example, my videographer that I was looking at for the longest time ended up not being available and it was a huge bummer, but on the plus side, I got a really awesome, great videographer that I'm really excited to work with. I'm just saying, 
maybe be a little more cautious with the dates and stuff because they get picked up like this and then you have to look elsewhere. So maybe not 10 months, maybe start looking at at the end of your year out planning. Also, I would suggest getting an address book. I picked this up, it was super cheap and it's adorable. And start writing down all your addresses so when it comes time to writing out your invitations and your save the dates, you don't have to worry about searching for them. They're gonna be all right here. I know this is getting a little long, but this is another little notebook that I keep all of my ideas and gifts I wanna to give to people, etc. Things that I don't wanna to forget to incorporate into my wedding that I can't pin on a Pinterest board. I do also have a Word document, but I also am really into writing things down and just looking at them and holding them into my hand. So for example, this says I want to have a card sign and have a suitcase so that people can put the cards into the suitcase. So little things like that, uh, and dessert ideas that I want to have, and then every time I lock down a vendor, I write it down in this book as well. Just to keep me organized, it's super important to stay organized whether you have a wedding planner or not. It's just nice to know what's going on around you. Of course, your wedding planner will update you with that, but if you're planning it on your own, like myself, then a notebook is always key. Also, apps like The Knot and The Wedding Wire, they have great timelines and ways to organize your wedding as well. I do have The Knot as my wedding website host, so that's another thing you can start planning out, signing up for your registry. I'll continue to talk more about what you need to start doing as I go along, but I'm only like a year out right now, so I'm starting to slow things down a smidge because I locked my vendors pretty early. And yeah, I'm gonna continue vlogging my wedding planning and you'll see me in vlog number two. Okay, I will see you in my next wedding vlog. Bye guys, happy planning.